Hi, welcome back to Exercise Physiology. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. All right. The topic of the next few videos is going to be what, what I like to call a metabolic roadmap. All right. So what we're going to do is we have three nutrients here at the top. These are our basic nutrients, glucose, amino acids, and fatty acids. What we're going to do is we're going to look at how the body deals with all of these. And I have these, the, an arrow means this is some pathway. It could be a long pathway or a short one. In some cases, it's a single enzyme. But these are the main processes that we're going to look at, and we're going to see individually how each one of these nutrients is dealt with. So this is going to be a multiple, uh, vi multiple videos to make up this whole um, topic, OK? All right. So in this first part, we're going to look at sugar, all right? Now, I have right here glycogen. Glycogen is a storage form of glucose. It's a polymerized form of glucose. So multiple glucose is linked together. Glycogen is found in two main places, the liver and skeletal muscle. Particularly type 2 muscle fibers store a lot of glycogen because they're going to rely heavily on glucose for their metabolism and to gain energy. So if I start with glycogen, I can turn glycogen into glucose. So number 13 right here, turning glycogen into glucose, that process right here is called glycogenolysis. Okay, glycogenolysis meaning the lysing glycogen, cleaving apart the units of glycogen to make glucose, all right? So anytime your, your cells, particularly skeletal muscle, need extra glucose, they're gonna start breaking down glycogen through glycogenolysis to make glucose, okay? If I wanted to, in times of the fed state, and I'm not exercising, I can do the reverse process. I can take glucose and turn it back to glycogen, the number 14. That pro process is called glycogenesis, okay? Distinguish it from gluconeogenesis, that is glycogenesis, okay? Just wanted to make that perfectly clear, okay? Now, if I have glucose and I want to metabolize it, number one, this process right here, glycolysis, okay? Glucose is going to go through glycolysis and ultimately become two molecules of pyruvate per one molecule of glucose. The point is, is glycolysis takes glucose to pyruvate. And I'll just mention it here, but we're going to look at it in more detail in, in another video. I can actually take pyruvate and turn it back to glucose. That's process nine right here. That's gluconeogenesis. So if I want to do the reverse direction, pyruvate to glucose, I can do that. That's called gluconeogenesis. But we're going to focus on glucose metabolism going from glucose to pyruvate, which is glycolysis number one. Process five right here is one enzyme. Very important, it's called pyruvate dehydrogenase. Normally we abbreviate that as PDH, pyruvate dehydrogenase. Pyruvate dehydrogenase takes pyruvate and converts it into acetyl-CoA. Acetyl-CoA is the central coenzyme, okay? Acetyl-CoA, can move into the TCA cycle, which is number six right here. In the TCA cycle, there's some main things that we produce that we want to look at, okay? The TCA cycle produces NADH and FADH2, and there should be a two right here, I apologize for that, FADH2, all right? Two coenzymes that are high energy that carry electrons. They're going to carry electrons to something right here, 7, 7, which is the electron transport chain, all right? The electron transport chain takes those electrons off in order to power number 8, which is called ATP, ATP synthase, okay? ATP synthase turns ADP into our high energy ATP that we can use for things like myosin, an enzyme in muscles that causes muscle contraction. Muscle contraction. That's very important, right? So let's go back up and just look to see what we saw. I can turn glycogen into glucose, that's glycogenolysis. I can then run glucose through glycolysis, turn that into pyruvate. And I have this enzyme pyruvate dehydrogenase, which converts pyruvate into acetyl-CoA. Then acetyl-CoA can move into the Krebs cycle, or TCA cycle, number six. In the process of going through this TCA cycle, it produces some NADH, 
and it produces an FADH2. The NADH and FADH2 then transfer their electrons to the electron transport chain. The electron transport chain uses those electrons to power ATP synthase, which makes ATP. So that would be the process on how gl glucose, or glycogen, but specifically glucose, makes ATP. These are the pathways it goes through in the skeletal muscle. So hopefully that makes sense. In the next video, we're going to do the same kind of thing, but we're going to do it with amino acids. Okay, And then we're going to do it with fatty acids in another video. And we'll probably spend some, other, some more time in another video covering things like ketone bodies. Okay, how do they relate to fatty acids and how do they relate to amino acids? It turns out there's a link between them. But one thing is, is common between all of these. Our central coenzyme, acetyl-CoA, is going to move into the Krebs cycle, power the synthesis of NADH and FADH2, and those power the electron transport chain, which powers ATP synthase, which gives us ATP. Okay, so that's going to be, this is going to be part one of our metabolic roadmap. And hopefully by the end of this metabolic roadmap series of videos, we'll have a basic understanding of how nutrients go throughout uh, the cell and how they propagate energy production. All right, so make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. In the next video, like I said, we'll look at amino acids, then fatty acids, and then ketone bodies. Join us next time.